Uh, my name is um, Dr. Albert Ai. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Human Ecology in the College of Agriculture, Science and um, Technology. Um, we receive a grant from USDA NIFA uh, for a global experiential learning. Um, as part of the uh, program objectives, we took some students from Delaware and Tuskegee who is a partner in this proposal to Ghana. Um, the project, um, one of the goals of the project is to provide students with um, a global experiential learning. Um, see how students in other countries or how things are related to food, um, agriculture, Food and agriculture is done in other countries. So um, I recruited um, two students. Kenisha um, on my left is a, a student in the Food and Nutrition Science program. And then Mona Lisa on my right is a student in the Animal Science program. We left here on July 22nd and we came back on August 4th. So it was for a total of, um, I believe it's 10 working days um, in Ghana. First, I sent out emails to students um, that I have this grant that um, provides an opportunity for students to travel to Ghana. So some of them reached out to me. So once I had the number of students that I could uh, travel with, I started the um, travel authorization. Some students needed to apply for a visa. I needed to apply for a visa to go to Ghana, even though I'm originally from um, Ghana. Um, um, Mona Lisa is originally from Jamaica, so she doesn't need a visa. Kenesha is an American, so she needed a visa um, to travel to Ghana. So there were three students. The third student, unfortunately, um, tested positive for COVID just two days before we could travel, so she couldn't travel. Everything was covered. Um, the uh, flight, hotel, meals. Kenesha Sutherland, and I am currently a junior that is majoring in food and nutritional sciences. I received an email from Dr. Taylor, who uh, received the email about the trip, and then she just spread the information to other students within like the nutrition um, dietetics program. I was so excited <laughs> when I saw that this opportunity was available and then also July is my birthday month. So it was just like, this is my birthday. I have to go. I um, enjoy learning about other cultures. I truly enjoy traveling and going into dietetics is a career shift for me. I am a chef. And so for me to learn about other cultures, the best way for me to learn about other cultures is to experience how they're cooking and what ingredients that they're using and being able to like physically be in a kitchen with another person or watching somebody doing something like that's how I'm able to take in information. So once I knew that this was opportunity there, I was like, there's definitely gonna be cooking. There's definitely gonna be different types of food and it's gonna be real food, authentic food. I am a first generation American. My mother is from Trinidad and my dad is from St. Vincent. So I've been to those two islands quite a few times. Um, I've also traveled, when I was in culinary school, I got the opportunity to go to France and to go to London. And so I just really enjoy learning about different cultures by like really immersing myself in the culture. I'm Mona Lisa Seaton, I'm an international student. I'm a senior in animal science. I was actually on the farm when my advisor said, do you want to go to Ghana? I was like, yes, I want to go to Ghana. <laughs> and so it was very exciting, like, I, it was absolutely unbelievable because outside of Jamaica, America is the first place I've ever been outside of Jamaica. So, and I admire Africa a lot. So it was really exciting for me. My aunt was excited, my mother couldn't believe, she cried, she <laughs> cried. Overall, it was very exciting for me. The flight was from JFK. We left, I think, around 11 p.m. Yeah, it was yeah. quite late, yes. Um, so 
we arrived in Ghana the next day, it was in the afternoon, and um, we had, had made arrangement for uh, the hotel, everything was uh, pre-arranged. So somebody came to meet us at the airport. Oddly enough, when we were walking out of the plane, I had a Dell State uh, hoodie on, and a man started talking to me like, oh, do you go to Dell State? And I'm just like, yeah, I'm on a trip right now. And he was just like, I know Tony Allen. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay, what are the odds? <laughs> Once we like literally stepped out of the airport, to me, it was just like the sun was so huge. And it was just like so bright and there was somebody just saying like welcome to ghana to us and the airport itself is also pretty colorful once we got outside of the airport it felt like home to me because as i said i'm from jamaica so the temperature the people overall the it was wonderful to see palm trees again <laughs> <laughs> and just the whole environment reminded me of home because it it's, it was almost like eight to nine months away from home, my first time out of Jamaica. So going to Ghana just, you know, bring, brought back that memory of Jamaica to me. As I mentioned then, it's a joint proposal. So there's um, another PI in Tuskegee. So we put the proposal, I mean, the itinerary together. But before putting the itinerary together, we had to contact some uh, research institutions, some local places on, for food, uh, food processing. So once they, we had a, their confirmation, uh, we developed the um, itinerary. There were six students from Tuskegee, um, four faculty, and then two staff. They came with a larger contingent. And their dean also happened to be in Ghana um, around the same time. So he jo she joined us um, for the welcome dinner. And then we also met her in uh, Kumasi. We go to Ghana in the afternoon and then the activity started in the evening. So there was a welcome dinner in a popular restaurant in Accra called Apitigo when we first started to meet the other students and faculty from Tuskegee is when it was time for the dinner. Um, once we got to the dinner, our tour guide explained what all of the dishes were to us and what we should try. Well, we should try everything. But um, yeah, he explained all of the dishes to us. Um, it was like a buffet style uh, situation. Once we got to the, the restaurant, they were playing reggae music. So, you know, it suited me well. <laughs> One thing I underestimated was your spice. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought I was used to spice. <laughs> it, it shocked me. <laughs> Their food was great. I'm uh, from Accra, um, from the capital city. Both my parents are from um, Accra. So I was able to visit family um, because my pa uh, my parents um, live in Accra. My sister is also in um, well, my mom lives in uh, Accra. Um, but then I also, I tell people that I had the opportunity to see other parts of Ghana that I haven't seen before. Um, I went to high school in Cape Coast. Um, it was a Catholic boarding school, so you're not allowed to go out a lot. I got the opportunity to go to Cape Coast Castle. It was my first time there, even though I spent several years in Cape Coast. I went to um, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology for my undergrad and I only knew campus and then the market where I go and buy food. I'd never been to Konfanochi Hospital before, I've never been to the um, Nishia Palace before, so it was um, um, a good experience for me as well. We wanted the students to both uh, um, experience, um, the experience to be educational and then cultural. Um, so, we had the opportunity to visit, to include um, universities, um, research labs, uh, food processing facilities, um, local uh, food um, joints, um, and then for cultural, we went to um, Cape Coast, um, we went to the slave uh, cast, uh, the castle. Um, in Kumasi, we went to the 
we drove by the uh, palace, the Menshia palace um, of the Ashanti king, but we could not enter. We went to uh, Konfanochi Teaching Hospital and we visited the site where um, it's believed that there's a sword. Well, the, the sword is there, but then uh, we are told that nobody can pull this yeah, out of the ground. Um, and then in Accra, um, we went to Jamestown. Uh, we went to Labadi Beach um, on the second day. We also uh, went to um, a bakery or a food processing facility where they were incorporating um, orange flesh uh, potato, which is supposed to be nutritious. So they were making bread um, and incorporating the orange flesh and sweet potato. And this is something that my collaborator in Tuskegee has been working on for quite some time. So she was excited to see that um, it's actually being uh, utilized. There wasn't a lot of animal science related things, but in my program, it's not only animal science, because you know, animals eat plants and we have to feed them with plants. And I'm also very interested in plants. So the, the using their products to make add value added products was pretty amazing to me like their orange fresh put the sweet potato which is your young ear they use it to make bread and, that, and it was very tasty so that was good to know they didn't have a lot of pest growing their crops from what i've learned uh, Going back to the animals, there we went to the a research lab where they were talking about like extracting fat and like proteins from certain products, and I was like, oh yeah, I learned that in one of my nutrition class. So that was pretty um, interesting. We went to Mampum. Pre um, prior to the trip, I did a, a study on Ivory Coast and their coca beans so it was it was great to see their their actual um, field of cocoa beans being planted and how they harvest from start to finish and all the things they do also it taught me that sometimes research is not what it is in person getting to learn what people believe and how they practice and their, as I said, cultural beliefs regarding certain things because I definitely went with some thoughts in regards to the cocoa field. But they had rich cultures, the experience was great. I also learned that I have like ancestors from Ghana, so I'm possibly a Ghana girl. <laughs> Getting into dietetics and wanting to be a registered dietitian is a second career for me and I'm a chef. So being able to go to places where you're seeing the entire production as um, they brought up going to like the bread factory, they had their own sweet potato farm where they grew, harvested their sweet potatoes and then turned it into bread. So to see the whole beginning to end with the bread manufacturing to me as a chef that was very exciting like once they said like oh we're gonna go visit this field i was just like what <laughs> and started running over there at the hendy farm mango farm seeing the different products that they were able to come up with was really amazing like they have mango honey so they have bees on the property that get their pollen from the mango trees and create their honey and like that was just like mind-blowing to me um and then as far as from like a nutritional standpoint with dietetics and all of that, seeing, again, back to the sweet potato, um, that Tuskegee and Dell State introduced this crop to Ghana because they wanted something that has a more nutritional value to offer to the people in Ghana. That's something that they wouldn't necessarily have before because it's just not something that grows there. That was also interesting to me because there was a... Um, Conference? When we all went to the restaurant and yes. so the, the um, well, it's, it's a meeting with the sweet potato growers. Yeah, so there we um, 
there was a presentation by some of the faculty members from Tuskegee and um, we were there with some of the farmers and producers of products of sweet potato and that was also like really interesting to see how much um, they're trying to change certain things in Ghana nutritionally. Uh, we also got to visit the Food and Drug Authority. Yes, I like that. We have administration. So theirs is the Food and Drug Authority. And to know the different processes that all the different food items have to go through in order to get their approval was um, interesting to learn about. We got to also go to the Food and Research Institute, and that was cool to see because they um, were also creating their own products. So they were growing mushrooms um, and they were doing that like start to finish type of a thing, like making their own sawdust, inoculating it, um, putting it into the dark rooms and all of that type of stuff. So that was interesting to see that they're looking to introduce different food items in Ghana. And then we got to be in the test kitchen and we made peanut soup, which was definitely like a highlight for me because again, I enjoy learning about people's culture through food and being able to be in the kitchen with these women and cooking, like that was very much just feeling like homey to me. Like I'm here with my mom and my girl mom. It was also interesting to know that they use almost every part of their plant to, to um, use as value added products like their leaves, like the potato leaves is yeah. rich in iron, which I didn't know that. But that was amazing to know that they use every part of their plant to use as food. And the orange flesh is not only used um, to make bread. Um, where we met the growers, they served us um, like, um, the orange flesh. The, 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 the fries, yes. we had the sweet potato fries, the mashed sweet potatoes, and then the sauteed sweet potatoes, and then there was a producer that was trying to sell the gari, gari. sweet potato gari, yeah. which is uh, normally made with cassava. Yes.
and like uh, she was saying that it rocked a little bit. So I wasn't fully enjoying the experience because I was just trying to get across quickly so I couldn't feel another person walking behind me. Um, but I did enjoy like the walk up to <laughs> the canopy as well and learning about the forestry, the protected forest, and that they were saying like there's a new forest and an old forest and all of the trees, plants, and animals are protected and that some of those trees can be up to like 500 years old. So while I was up there, I was having a small moment of like, oh my goodness, these trees are so old. This is amazing. And then let me get across, so. <laughs> the Cape Coast experience, it was, it was very touching. Lear as I said, lear learning something and experiencing something, seeing it for yourself, it, it gives uh, a different impact. A different overview because I'm I've learned that churches were involved in slavery but seeing the actual building with the church on top of a, a dungeon it, it was pretty sad to, to see that but overall the experience was good. Um, and as Mona Lisa mentioned we got to go out to the Cape Coast and got to go to the slave river and the slave castle and I myself have just been doing like my own um, after coming to Dell State, like one of the first classes that you have to take is African American history. And there are certain things that I knew beforehand, but you know, once you start doing your own research into things and you start reading certain stuff, um, you get different perspective. So to be reading certain things, learning about it in school, and then going to see it in person, it just kind of, it was sad. But it was also very just like, you know, we're here for a reason, for me anyway. Um, there was like one part when we were at the Slave River where we all like got a coin and they wanted us to like talk to our ancestors and like throw the coin. I'm about to tear up right now. <laughs> and like throw a coin. It was just like a very like grounding, humbling moment for me, for real. Be off the ground, off the where the slaves were actually buried. The entire, the entire place was a graveyard like they told us that they specifically designed like the doorway for it to be kind of short so when you enter like you have to bow your head so you're giving respect to the ancestors and they had the first river i mean the first bat and then the last bat yeah so it was like um you get marched for you know hundreds of thousands of miles and then they bring you here to clean you up fatten you up basically before you get taken to the slave castle, which is where we got to see the door of no return, where you know millions of Africans left and they just knew they were just never coming back, basically. And yeah, just to see all that was just like a very humbling moment. Gratitude. Phenomenal. Amazing. Uh, we want to, we would like to thank um, USD and IFA for providing funding uh, for this project. Um, I think um, it provided the students and, and, and staff and faculty um, a rich experience, both educational and cultural. And um, I will encourage other students to uh, participate in some of these programs. And um, we hope to make another trip um, sometime next year with another group of students. Um, unfortunately, they can't go again. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but then uh, they were great um, um, students. Um, I enjoyed traveling with them. And um, if there's an another opportunity to um, do something else with them, um, I'll gladly do 